I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Okay, at the end of uh, part one of Menton's video, he introduces the Chicago Field Museum's uh, display on evolution uh, by where he, it compares it to a gambling casino, and he shows a couple of photos um, and such from that, talking about, you know, showing how they have gambling and about life is a crapshoot, um, and he does start to speculate a little bit about... Um, you know, the harm it may cause a child believing that, you know, their parents and their lives and everything are just random chance and all of that. He, t he But that's a foreshadowing of what's going to come at the end, and I'll talk about it in some detail when I get that far. Uh, so he, uh, let's see what he talks about here. Um, well, the first thing, the, the flaw with this is, uh, is that, I'm assuming, and I don't, I, I can't speak for the uh, Chicago Field Museum, but my assumption is, is that when they show a display about chance, making the comparison to mutations being chance, um, they are referring to the raw material of evolution, not the, not the fact that evolution itself is all chance, because evolution is not chance. Mutations, the raw material, the building blocks of evolution are chance, but evolution itself um, is mutation plus selection, okay? Um, so variation, I'll, about, I'll say that. Variation plus selection as opposed to mutation, um, just because it has negative context that aren't necessarily accurate, but nonetheless. Variation plus selection. Um, a way I compared that, and, I'm, and I don't want to get into too much detail about this. Um, I did do a video on my first version of it showing this. But let's just say you have a, you have six die. Six, six dice? Yes, dice is plural. Six dice. And your goal is to roll six sixes. Okay, you want to roll six sixes. Your chances of doing that throwing the die on fair, with fair die is 1 in 46,656. That means that if you were to constantly roll these dies, constantly, you're picking them up, dropping them, picking them up, dropping them, every two seconds, your chances of getting your six sixes um, is, um, we said, well, it's 1 in 46,000 plus some. Which, if you could do it every two seconds, that works out to be you would roll six sixes about once, one, well, once every 24 hours or so. It's about once in 25 hours. Um, pretty unlikely, right? It's an unlikely event. It happens. It could happen your first roll. It could happen your 10th roll. It could happen your 46,000th roll. It could happen your millionth roll. But anyways, but the, that's not a very accurate way to describe evolution. Evolution, yes, evolution um, can be the raw material for evolution can, can be compared to rolling the die. Okay, random. There's mutations. There's there's recombination. There's random variance in genetic makeup of offspring. But what makes that not an accurate description is the fact that natural selection preserves those favorable mutations, those favorable variations um, relating to the environment in which the organism lives. Um, so, or in which the population is, is existing. So what that means is, is picture you have your six dice and you roll them, and let's say you're on your first roll, you roll one six. You take that dice, set it aside. Take your five dice, roll them. Say this roll, you get two sixes. You take those out, put it in there. The next roll, you get no sixes. Pick it up again, roll it, and you get a six. And you keep doing that, and any of us can do that. Try it yourself. You could roll six sixes by by saving your positives, saving your sixes out, um, you can roll six sixes in just a, in, in in well usually under a minute, easily under a minute, and you can do this over and over and over again. That's a better description of evolution. Yes, yes, there's randomness to it, but there's also a selection that takes the, t that skews this randomness. The random the, the random output at least is skewed towards what fits the environment. Okay, so that 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 was that's, and I I'm assuming that this museum explained that later on. I'm assuming that that's not um, they didn't just leave it at life as a crapshoot. Okay, I, I'm assuming they went on more. Okay, he has uh, 
Richard Lewontin, to us quote from him, I'm not going to get into this stuff. Some of this I'm not going to go into. So he describes hominid here. I'm going to finish up with this portion. Um, he describes hominid. Uh, this is bad. Bad creationist. Bad. Um, he says a hominid, by scientific definition, is a known ancestor of man, a collateral relative of man, or man himself. And then he proceeds to explain that he believes there's no hominids in existence outside of man himself. He doesn't believe in any human ancestors. He doesn't believe in any human relatives. He, they're, you know, therefore there's only man. Uh, hominid. By scientific definition, a hominid is a member of the family hominidae. Okay? Family hominidae, well, includes all of the great apes. Orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, both both species, and man, as well as the extinct you know, dryopithecines and the um, civopithecines and australopithecines. All of those are counted as hominids. Um, we human beings, in our, well, actually, that's not, not even as accurate anymore either. Um, what pongins, which is a subfamily of the hominids, now includes only the orangutan. Hominins, the subfamily that includes human beings, includes now the the dryopithecines, the the chimpanzee, gorilla, and human being, as well as the extinct hominid, hom, you know, the, that we know of. Anyway, so that's just a terrible definition. Terrible. I don't know. He he. That that's like a 1950. That, that used to be. They had humans in their own family, apes in their own family back in the 1950s. That's where he got that definition from. I would hope he would keep more accurate, more up-to-date than that. Uh, he talks about ne Neanderthals was touted as a collateral ancestor of man. Well, yeah, he says that they're perfectly modern humans or whatever. Yeah, except for the fact that the morphological evidence and the molecular evidence, including genetics, says otherwise. But um, it, if he's got some new evidence that's uh, outside of the morphology and mole molecules, I'd like to see it. Okay, then he shows a, this is what's really funny, is he shows a um, sort of a textbook family tree of man, right? Uh, and he has, that the dotted lines are proposed, uh, you know, that, that in the fine print, that the dotted lines represent proposed relationships, meaning that the scientists don't even know they put a dotted line, but that you have to read the fine print to see that. It's pretty uh, disingenuous there, Dr. Minton. I apologize for saying so, but you're that's, you know that, first of all, that diagram is one that you made yourself or somebody else made. It's not from any text. You don't claim it is, but I think you don't specifically state that you wrote it yourself because it says, <laughs> it says right in the figure caption for it, common ancestors of hominids and apes. Remember, hominids are, apes are hominids by any scientific classification. So that obviously wasn't one that was cre that was one that was created with your defin by your definition of hominid which is not scientifically accurate or you know mod it, you know it's not within the last 40 years have as anybody looked at it that way so right there you know that it's, your diagram is fake um, it fine print implying that we're sort of sneaking this in that we're trying to you know we don't want to blatantly lie but we want to like deceive the public that's pretty dishonest and um, awfully uh, oh, I don't know, there's an irony, and we'll get to somewhat later on. Um, so, there, right there, and you, then you talk about how apes have no ancestors, and, you know, that therefore any fossil we find, we automatically say it's a human ancestor, or on the human, a hominid, as you would define it, not an ape, because we don't want to, you know, it's so much money spent in and made off of finding human ancestors that the apes should just go off and find their own because we don't care about them. Reality is there's extensive work looking for ape ancestors. We have a buttload of ape ancestors. Um, not unfortunately, we have a shortage of them after the human, after that hominin the chimpanzee human split. We don't have as, we don't have, we have some fossil chimps from that um, but we don't have as many as we would like. It has to do with environment. We also don't have um, human, even modern type human fossils from the environment in which 
chimpanzees live, meaning that those that type of environment doesn't fossilize things very well. We have very few samples of it. We do now have fossil chips. Um, but prior to that, we have lots of ape ancestors. We have the dryopithecines. What do you think those are? Proconsul, all of that, the, the whole dryopithecine are, are ape ancestors, also human ancestors, but people have variously tied them to the different different clades within the apes. We have civipithecines. What are civipithecines? Civipithecines are, are the group that le led to um, orangutans. What about those? those? Those aren't on your chart. And we've got lots of those from the time period in which you talk about not mentioned on your chart. So uh, I don't know if you accuse us of being deceptive. Um, maybe you didn't know any better. Anyway, I'm going to end this now. This is ending. Uh, I will now start part three.